a loaded question. <laughs> There's a lot of excitement that happens. Okay, we're live. Hello, good evening. Thank you uh, for joining. It is for the May 24th, 2018 workshop um, for, uh, regarding the budget. First on docket is Sue. City Thank Clerk. You. And Thank I can you, never Mayor Levesque and last City name, Councilors. So. I am Sue Clemens Delaire, City Clerk, and I'm going to be presenting the FY19 budget for the City Clerk's Office. Uh, drivers of this budget are salaries. Uh, we have three full time employees in the office and elections. Um, costs that are associated with elections are staffing the five uh, polling places and central processing, uh, which essentially is like having a sixth polling place. Um, it also includes the uh, cost for leasing the equipment uh, for each of the polling places. Uh, we've got the um, tabulators and the accessible voting um, machines. Um, and it also includes the cost of programming the machines and the cost of ballots. Um, some of the increases uh, in, in this budget uh, one would be under professional services. You'll see that there's been an increase of $2,500. Um, that's for keeping our uh, ordinances up to date on the website and for um, providing hard copies uh, in the books that we keep here uh, in the office. Um, in the past, we've been budgeting about $2,500 uh, for that line item and over the past probably three or four years we've gone above that so that's the reason that we've increased that we never know what it, you know what the cost is going to be it depends on the number of ordinances that are amended or adopted um, another increase um, I did request three thousand dollars be included for for record restoration uh, half of that has been cut but you will see fifteen hundred dollars um, under that line item uh, it is one of the primary responsibilities of the municipal clerk is the care and preservation of the records that are in our custody. Um, and we do have a general obligation to, um, you know, preserve them and make sure that they're not damaged. Um, and that's, that's about all I, I have, unless you have questions. Uh, Sue, I just have <coughs> one question. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, <coughs> uh, rank choice voting. Mm-hmm. Do we anticipate or do you anticipate any additional costs? Um, I did have to order extra um, thumb drives for this ele election, and they're $15 each. I had to order 13. So it's like $200, I believe. Um, but other than that, we already had two tabulating machines per polling place. Uh, if, if we wouldn't have, we would have had to have leased additional equipment, but we already have the two machines. Um, because all the state ballots have to go through one machine, local ballots have to go through another. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, any uh, any questions from the city council before we move on? Real quick, Councilor Gary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When you were talking about record restoration, how far back have you been able to preserve? We have records going back to. Um, we have birth records that go back to the 1900s uh, and um, death and marriage records that go back to 1920. I think we have probably five or six books that are from the 1800s that should be restored. The last time we did an assessment um, of our records, uh, it's probably probably about 100, 150,000 to get everything that we need restored. Because I know there were about 10 years plus ago, they were talked by your predecessors about coming up with some sort of plan to systematically try to go back and work forward. And I don't know where that ever ended off and how far along you guys got or because of budgetary cuts, if it was ever started or if it was dropped. Yeah, w when I uh, took over this position, um, we, I think we budgeted 12000 a year for like five years, but whenever there's a cut, that's one of the first places that gets cut. So, um, you know, we haven't gotten very far. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Titus? Yeah, one question, Sue. Um, the preparation for packets and all that stuff, is that under your yes. expenses and all that kind of stuff? Or 
with all the photocopying, because we've gone to I, uh, you know, electronic technology now, where will we see the savings that we were expecting for copying and printing and all that stuff for the Actually, and the paper is not included in, in my budget. Um, notebooks, th that type of thing would be in my supply budget. Um, but paper was always out of, uh, I don't know, facilities. Yeah. And the cost of ink, the cost of ink has been coming out of my, my budget. Um, but I have never actually put money into, I didn't have a line item for that. Yeah, so. Yeah, no, I, we definitely know the savings. I just wanted to be able if there was a place you could actually put your hand on it, but I guess not. Yeah, not, not in my. Thank you. I mean, it's actually, it's, it's kind of interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. Maybe after we're done the heavy lifting here on the budget, because we do know it's a nominal amount, but it's still a savings. Maybe a back of the napkin analysis on ROI by moving the tablets would be helpful. I think it was uh, several hundred dollars a month at Leo. Per, I mean, it was several hundred dollars a month we were spending between paper, ink, people's time, and Step all that. Time. Time's big. Um, and you add that up over the course of the year, it's in the thousands of dollars of savings, I, I thought. But I wanted to be able to see if I could put my finger on it. Thanks. Okay. Is that it? Thank you very much. One more question, and I think it might come under your uh, parameter. I mean, that is <coughs> a lot more, we're getting a lot more stuff on internet. Uh, are you noticing any savings there? I know you've already printed the booklet for us, which is, I, I love having that, and we do have it on the tablet. So is, is there with your sending agendas and uh, revised agendas, that kind of thing, to us electronically? Is that saving us any money from what we did before? Is it a wee bit? Um, as far as having the tablets instead of, yeah. W well, the tablets and also sending us, I mean, I don't know, probably correct me if I'm wrong, but a few years ago was everything sent uh, electronically? We've been sending everything electronically for except for, you know, agenda packets, budget uh, packets, and that so sort of thing. Quite a few years? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's my newbie question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Next on the agenda, human resources. Ms. Muma. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. My name is Chris Muma. I'm the human resource director for the City of Auburn. And I'm here to present the um, FY19 budget for the Human Resource Department. Human Resources has a very small budget compared to the bigger ones, as you can see. Uh, but we do have some budget drivers. Our biggest is our salary line, obviously. Um, currently, we have myself and a, an HR specialist um, working in our department. Also, um, there is a position for safety director that currently um, is vacant. We have not filled that position as of yet. Um, the other driver is our recruitment <coughs> costs, which includes both advertisement and um, the pre-employment physicals that we require for our employees. Um, and we're seeing uh, advertising has is almost always online now. Um, it's very expensive to advertise in um, paper print um, right now. And so that cost continues to rise because um, the internet market is, is where it's at now. So we've seen an increase in the past couple of years um, on that. As well as the pre-employment physicals, um, uh, we've been hiring employees and because the job market is so good out there, it's hard to retain employees. Um, so we just get done paying for physicals for one employee and they go and take a job with another, another municipality, which now puts us back to another opening that we have to pay. So I did have to increase that budget line um, a little bit for this year. Um, additionally, there's an increase in the training budget, uh, both uh, Sherry and myself. Um, I, I've been with Human Resources for 16 years, but Sherry is very new to the position. She was an office manager and, and moved over to HR. So I did increase that line um, as well so she can get her certifications. That's it. <laughs> in the budget itself, um, there is some increases. Um, that I haven't talked about. Um, 
uh, I talked about training intuition and advertising, but also in dues and subscriptions, and that's because our memberships do um, cost money, and both of us are sure our members as well as the main uh, local human resource government group as well that cost membership there. There's a couple of decreases. The um, other uh, support operating budget is decreased. That is for the H1N1 uh, flu masks. In the event that we had a major outbreak, um, we found that we were well stocked with them. And in fact, one of the hospitals uh, requested if we could assist them because they were running out of masks and ours were due to expire. So we lent them some and they gave some back. So I did decrease that a little bit. We haven't used that budget in a while. So any questions? I'm sure there's always questions at the council. <laughs> Do we have any, sorry, like Councilor Rosanio? Ms. Muma, I really appreciate what you've done with your budget. <clears throat> um, you deleted any funding for professional development. Mm -hmm. So that um, item there is to, um, if the city manager um, needed, wanted to put on a program um, for his department directors, for example, and needed some assistance there, or if there was a department in particular who wanted to do, um, you know, some training, um, you know, like leadership training or, you know, ethics training for their department that they didn't budget for. Um, so it's very underutilized. We very rarely touch that. So that was one of the uh, cuts that we eliminated. Do you think it's not touched because the departments are paying it for it themselves or it's just not happening? Typically, they have training uh, money in their budgets. This would be, you know, for things that were unexpected, like ethics training is a good example on that one. Um, I have used it before to um, help a department director who didn't have enough. We've been able to tap into that budget, you know, to help out with that. But it's very underutilized. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor? Council Fournier. Um, Along the human resources line, I, I uh, this is piggybacking uh, an email that I responded to um, Chief Crowell, commending him on you know the amount of people he had staff people who are living in Auburn, 20 was it 26 percent or something like that, and uh, and I was thinking <coughs> many of the other uh, all of the other departments have very few people living here, and I was thinking. We should probably provide, consider pre providing an incentive, and actually this goes to the councilors, an incentive for uh, people to stay here, to live here, build houses here or buy houses. Let's say, for example, take 10-year period of time, $10,000, that would cover um, a purchase, you know, you know, costs for purchasing a house, you know, closing costs, cost at least $5,000, if not more. If we were to offer an incentive to, you know, the staff member, uh, and then within a period of, give it up front, and then with a period of time, within the 10 years, if that person, for, for example, leaves at seven, the seventh year, then they have to repay back the last, uh, you know, $3,000. So I was just throwing it out there as a possibility to help entice our staff members to move into Auburn because it, we have a really low number of people living here who work here. And I think sometimes it makes for, you know, just easier to get the job done, less travel, less, you know, less gas. I know I used to travel one hour and it was a pain. And uh, so I just throw that out as an idea and ask the council to just, maybe we can bring it back and have a discussion on that. Yeah, I'll, let me, I'll follow up real quick. I mean, I think this is worthy of a couple minutes. Um, I've done very similar things in my business before, and it's huge. It attracts great people. It gets them, A, buying a home in you know, a relatively short commute. Um, I made it in the Lewiston, Auburn area. Um, and you just get loyalty and the looks on people's faces. You know, first time home buyer, it's an American dream. It's part of it, along with apple pie. Um, I think that's a great idea, Councilor Fournier. And I'm wondering if, from an ROI standpoint, A, what you think of this, and B, is there an ROI that can be had if, let's say, $20,000 is budgeted per year for five years to help two Auburn employees a year, okay, or maybe two to three Auburn employees per year to purchase a home in Auburn? Mm -hmm. We've actually offered that up during negotiations before. 
um, for um, several of the bargaining units. Um, and, you know, it's a bargaining tool. And, and for the most part, um, you know, they wanted other things, and so they didn't take the, um, the bonus <laughs> for, for living here in Auburn. Or, or an know. assistance program. Was it an assistance program or a bonus? Um, it was an assist buying assistance. It was a home buying okay. you know, um, okay. program. So, but it's certainly something that we've looked at and something that we would consider. And again, you know, it, it'd be, have to be something that would be budgeted. Hmm. They said no. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did. What, what, would you would, the shop steward can call me afterwards so I can tell him how <laughs> short-sighted he or she is. <laughs> would you explain a little bit about the safety person? You said that that you haven't. Yes. So um, last year um, we had Ray Lucier, who had been our safety director since um, 2008. It is a part-time position. Um, he was promoted to the deputy chief um, in the fire department and still acted as the safety director. Each department has their own safety person that oversees safety within the department. And then um, Ray oversaw the whole city as well as here in Auburn Hall. Um, so when he uh, left employment with the city of Auburn, um, we offered that up to the new deputy chief, Bob Chase. Um, he has since been promoted. So that vacancy is expected to be filled um, with somebody from public safety. Um, we haven't got there yet. We're hoping that whoever we hire for the new deputy chief um, will take on that responsibility. But currently, each department does have a safety person that kind of oversees their initial departments. Um, and we do have a safety team in this building, of which Paul Frazier is a member, um, an acting member. And um, he, along with Rick DeShano, kind of help out here in this building right now until we can get somebody on board. So th that pay scale, does it fall under your department or does it fall under the fire department? The, the pay scale, um, actually, it, that particular piece falls under the HR department, but the actual salary line, Jill, I believe, comes under the workers' comp budget. Workman's comp. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Uh, Councilor Titus? Yes, thank you. Um, just a couple questions. One of them, in the training and tuition, mm -hmm. I was just going to bring up the point there is a lot of training that goes on within the city in all departments. Mm -hmm. uh, and we pay for a lot of training too. I don't know if there would ever be a chance of being able to gather up all those certifications and trainings that people have and post them somehow or make them available, uh, both as a advertising piece to say, listen, we train. I, I believe in training as long as what you're, you're getting what you pay for and most of the time you do. Mm -hmm. um, and then also if we're, we have a lot of positions uh, I'm thinking mostly in the fire department, maybe in our police department as well, where we pay for training. We hire somebody, we pay for their training to become what it is we'd want them to be. But then the danger of them leaving right away is always prevalent. So I don't know if it's such a thing as having, we're going to pay for this and get you to this level, but then you stay with us for a certain length of time and offer a bonus for staying for that. You know, see the longevity bonus is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it could be trained, uh, tied to the training. But I think it would be a great advertising piece for us as an employer to show most employees out, employers out there do not offer the kind of training that a municipality might or whatever. You either have to come in trained or get it on the, you know, at night. Uh, so I think that would be a good thing down the road. Mm -hmm. um, the other question I had was related to the, the advertising. Obviously you say it's a little bit less than what the 2017 actual was. Uh, it was 4,500 actual. You're forecasting 30,000. So. <laughs> Maybe right. we found more efficient ways to get the advertising number out there, or we're not going to advertise as much, or? Yeah, I believe back in 2017, where it says the actual uh, budget line for that, that was for the city manager recruitment. Okay. So when you advertise for a city manager, it goes all over the U.S. So it was very expensive and came out of my budget. Oh, very good. <laughs> And then one last thing we received, had received an email about uh, our experience with, uh, with insurance, health insurance for the mm -hmm. first quarter, which I was pleased to see. Mm -hmm. um, and it showed that um, we were at 74% of, of our premiums were 74% of claims. Correct. Um, and I understood that the ACA required that it stay at 
or more uh, on the insurance company side. Uh, is there any way that if we found out at the end of the half year or the, we were the still stayed at that 70, 74 percent, we'd get a rebate back? Or is that just something that's not real? We just thought it was. We would not qualify for that whole rebate. So you're talking about the ACA. The 80 20 rule, the ACA required right. that they could have no more than 20 percent administrative and sales expenses. Right. That related. is not something that we would be, uh, would be applied to us. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Um, I, okay. I believe it's with the plans that are in the health exchange itself, but I, I could be wrong and I can research that for you. Okay, that would be interesting to find out. I thought that was an industry standard that was required by all insurance companies. If, if in ACA. fact it was, it would go to Maine Municipal and Maine Municipal would, would pass on the us. savings back yeah. to us. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Great. Appreciate it. Have a very good evening. Thank you for taking your time out. Next on the agenda, information technology. <coughs> Mr. Frazier, welcome and thank you. I believe we have a handout from you, information technology FY 2019, correct? Good evening. I'm Paul Fraser, IT safety coordinator. <laughs> one of my one of my hats. The, the, the handout that I, hand, I gave out to you is sort of an introductory, it's a, an outline of, of the projects that we've had going on this year and in FY19. <coughs> FY18 is the first year of a two-year endeavor to, up, to do a dramatic upgrade of our systems. We've operated for many years on a, uh, on a shoestring budget uh, with one or two people. We tried to keep things just as, as inexpensive as we possibly could. The world has changed out from under us. Uh, we really just can't continue to operate IT the way we operated even three years ago, much less 10 years ago. So we've had a steady increase in staffing, a steady increase in the, the funds that we put into security. And the, the diagram or the, the, the image at the top of that handout is what we call the CIA triad in the security world. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability the, everything that we do in IT needs to tie into that model. The confidentiality is that we protect your data, your information. We're very careful about what goes out and how it gets used. And it's, it's, we can't guarantee safety, but we do everything we can to, to ensure it, to make it work. Integrity is that the data that we present, that, that you find and use, really is what we put there that nobody's been able to come in and make changes to that data and then slip out again to give us the you know, incorrect view or in, incorrect analysis of what's going on. And the availability is where our weaknesses are. We could guarantee confidentiality and integrity if we didn't have users. Uh, regrettably, the whole computer thing, people really need to use it and they need to have computers and that's where our weaknesses are in terms of our security. Uh, the, the weak link in any security system is the individual users. Uh, people get social engineered into divulging passwords. People don't change passwords or use very simple passwords that are easy to crack. Um, and, and that's where we, we struggle the most. So most of what we've done and most of what you'll see described in the, in the rest of that page is our attempt to shift that risk off of our shoulders and onto somebody else's. So instead of storing all of our data in the basement of this building, where it's vulnerable to uh, ransomware attacks or physical attacks like the dam breaking and flooding the bottom two floors of this building where all of our, our, our data center is, we are transferring those risks to various cloud providers. Microsoft is the biggest one. All of our email now is on the Microsoft cloud. The, uh, our I, we we're in the process of moving all of our documents and all of our files to the Microsoft Cloud. And the, the, the reason for that, as I just mentioned, was that that's, that shifts that risk. Microsoft then becomes responsible for the security of the system, for the backups of that system, for the integrity of the data, for the retention of emails and, and documents that have retention requirements. Um, th that we've shifted all of that responsibility to them. That does come at a cost, and when we start going through the budget, you'll see that several items there have increased significantly because now, instead of buying hardware here 
and buying licensing here, we're buying licensing from cloud providers, which includes the hardware. So when we buy a license from Microsoft, we're buying the, 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 the permission to use the software, and we're also, with that, buying the, the location where all those files are being stored and all of the background things, all the infrastructure that we did in the in behind that to maintain that information. So my, my goal, ultimately, is that you're not going to need me at all, and I can slip quietly away, and everything will go great because everything's off of our building. Or if we have to close, I, I noted that the talk about uh, personal protective equipment, the PPE, if there was a flu epi uh, pandemic, we can operate now from outside of this structure. If we had a flood and lose part of this building or a truck accident out front, we are no longer tied to this structure because much of our data, including our tax records, our tax processing, uh, vehicle registration processing, is all being handled outside of this building. We're no longer concentrating everything we do in one structure. And as you go down through that list, I've crossed off some of the ones that we've already done. The other ones, that the ones that are not yet crossed off are because they are either in process or projects that we'll be starting in FY19. Uh, the, with the staff we have, we couldn't do that all, all in one go. So I'm happy to answer questions about that, or we can start going through the, the budget numbers itself, if it has at your pleasure. Why don't we uh, go through the budget numbers? Okay. That way we can save all questions to the end. Sure. Part. Thank you. So the, the increases that you'll see right from the beginning, regular salaries, we currently have four and a half FTEs in this department, which includes uh, Great Falls Television. My proposal or my request, rather, is that we're going to five full-time employees. We currently share two employees that are dedicated IT. Um, Brian Susi, who is operating the cameras, and you all know him at this point, is acting as an IT technician, and he is the position that you see there as IT support tech. Currently, he is part-time Great Falls Television and is available to go and remote shoots and things like that. I have more work for him to do as an IT person that he could do as a full-time employee. So I'm asking to move him to full-time IT. Um, Phil Larley, who's the GFTV station manager, would remain as GFTV, although Brian will still be recording governmental meetings. That'll still be his responsibility in addition to doing all of the hardware support pieces. Uh, the other new position is the changing the database staff support manager, which is currently a shared position between IT and finance, and making that position dedicated to IT. Uh, it it's, I have more work for, for Jill Cunningham to do than she can do in a, week, in a full day, and Jill Eastman desperately needs that person in finance as well, more than half time, um, sharing it has been better than not having anybody at all doing that in IT, but, it's, but I really need somebody in there full time. So with your permission, we would move the department from four and a half FTE to five full-time em employees, and there are some increases that I'm asking for for those two employees as their responsibilities become more valuable, as if we, we need to retain those employees. The, uh, Computer technicians are more easily lured away and poached than our television cameramen. Um, so we really want to keep those people. Uh, the, the others, there have been some changes as we go down through the budget lines. Uh, the, the big ones that you'll see is the, uh, in the software licensing, and that is due to the fact that we are now paying cloud services. We are paying people for those licenses. Instead of owning software, the current model is that you rent it from Microsoft, from Tyler, from Lucidity, or, or whatever the, the whatever vendor is, instead of an upfront cost. We bought Office 2007 one time 15 years ago, or 10 years ago, I guess at this point, and we didn't pay for it again. The problem with that is that Microsoft doesn't support those products indefinitely. So as vulnerabilities and exploits are discovered in old versions of their software, Microsoft stops providing the patches. And every time you open up Microsoft Office, uh, you know, Word 2007, you make our entire organization vulnerable to viruses and malware and other kinds of exploits. By going with the licensed software, the Office 365, we have all the current 
versions of the Office suite, and those will change as Microsoft rolls out new versions. And as they patch it, they're not patching it on our computer, they're patching it on theirs. And every time I turn on my PC, it's checking to see if it's got the most current releases from, from the vendor, from the writer, from the people who programmed it, who wrote it. So there are some big changes. Right now, in this, in this year and in next, in FY19, we've paid for some of those increases through the CIP project, the, the upgrading of our systems. That will eventually show up in operating budget, and we'll expect that there will be, at some, you know, after FY19, uh, an increase which will then be, become the, the, the bottom line, the status quo. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, questions for the council at this point? Starting out on the left, Councilor Gary, anyone? Not, no, thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Young. Yes, this only uh, shows the expense, not in the, the income. Correct. But where will that be mentioned? That's revenues, it must be out of finance. It's a, it's, we have very few revenues that are dedicated to the department. Well, the, the franchise agreement, isn't there, isn't that, rolled into this? It does, but that goes into the general fund. That, that, won't be, that won't be reflected in this document. This is strictly expenses. Here. Okay, so that will be mentioned later on, or? I, it's part, yeah, part of the, the general fund. It's part of the revenue piece of your budget. When Probably next week when we meet on Tuesday, we will be talking about all of those things that we haven't, all of one, the oddball departments, basically, and the revenue. Um, there is a line item in your revenue, if you look in your budget book, that says um, franchise fees. And then there's also a line item of franchise fees from the city of Lewiston. Because Lewiston pays us a portion of their franchise fees for their use of Great Falls as well. Thank you. I'm grappling with the fact that Joe just called us an oddball department. <laughs> It's one of the only departments that has uh, fun well, fun funding other than property tax. <clears throat> Any other questions, Councilor Titus? Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Um, my question is kind of general. Uh, IT scares the devil out of me. Um, and all departments that I've ever worked with and the budgets that I've worked with, I've seen these astronomical increases year after year. And I know this transitioning. And I don't know enough about it to say whether we should or shouldn't do something. But I guess I'm going to ask you, I know that we had a, a pretty large CIP commitment to IT and we're going to have another one this year. Do you see this as the norm, 16, 20 percent increases year over year and in large investments like we're going to have 400 grand invested in a system that is, we're going to have to replace it in three years? Are we? I'd like to see an end to this. I understand it's expensive. But at this rate, the taxpayers are going to have to move out of Auburn because they can't afford the IT. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the two CIP years, the, the FY18 and the FY19, that is designed to keep or to prevent the more incremental. We'd be looking at 30 or 40,000 increases out of CIP every year, basically forever. This is going to insulate us from that. So we're going to pay more licensing costs in our operating budget but we're no longer going to be buying racks of servers, um, disk arrays to store all of our data. We store about uh, almost four terabyte of data um, on an ongoing basis. That's not archived, that's just our current data set. Um, so so that, that hardware and that licensing also reaches end of life and the vendors just won't support it after a certain point. So we would be going in and, re and re replacing that um, every probably about it we should be doing it every three years. We've tried to do a five to six year replacement cycle. Um, but we will no longer be doing that. So my expectation is that once we've got these two big projects out of the way, it's gonna be a long time before we need to come in and ask again. If you look back at our history, you'll see that there's been very little in CIP for, for IT. We've done, we, we've done little incremental operating budget increases. We've never asked for big chunks. Um, and that philosophy j basically changed as uh, two councils ago uh, when we were advised, no, we, we can't continue doing this. We can't maintain our environment 
with incremental increases, and it was time for a wholesale change. Um, I had been chomping at the bit to go to a cloud-first philosophy already, and that kind of released us to do that. That council said, under, understood that and said yes, and freed us up to do that. But the, the whole point is that we will have much less invested in this building and in hardware because now we're licensing it from others, people other places. For example, we have, well, I, I mentioned we have about four terabyte of data. Our current licensing with Microsoft authorizes us to use 255,000 terabytes. We won't fill that anytime soon. Do you see, but do you see continual increases like 35% in licensing fees year over year? Not percentage what? Not as a percentage. I mean, that's, that's what I'm really trying to get at. I understand right. that we're, we're upgrading, but I just don't want to sure. see year over year. Out. It's, right. It's the, the, big in, the increase in 18 and the increase in 19 we took out of the CIP, uh, and that will show up as an operating agent in, in FY20. But, it, to add, but that'll be a, once it gets to that level, it will not continue to increase by 30% after that. There will probably be 2 or 3% annual increases as licensing costs increase. That's all I'm anticipating then. Uh, Paul, and, and maybe this is for Jill and, and the city manager as well. Um, just to follow up with what uh, Councilor Titus said, can we get a 10-year look forward and maybe going back to just IT? In other words, capital investments today, what's that going to mean year four? What's that going to mean year five? And if you're going, sheesh, ooh, ow, then, then that's the argument about okay, wait a second, are we making capital investments in something that will be obsolete in four years? And say, and you have to come back to the council and say, listen, it was a good plan, but it's not feasible anymore. We'd like to avoid that ambiguity. Sometimes sort of subscription-based modeling in the cloud makes sense because you're avoiding that large capital expenditure up front exactly. with the risk of obs you know, obsolescence, um, obsolescence rather. So I really, I think, to, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but does that summarize your, your thought process a little bit? Yeah. It's like, are we investing now? And what's a gain? What's I want to see, I wanna see a leveling off. I yeah, mean, I, want level, I, want to, I want to see it go down. I mean, theoretically, if you're investing, you know, in a CIP bonding, then your thirty to 40000 here and there to keep up goes away. Right. And that's, that's our current plan now. I won't guarantee that there won't be increases. And I will tell you that projecting out 10 years is just it's a swag. Um, ten years ago, we had no clue that we'd be going to the cloud now and what was going to be available. That The technology has moved so quickly that I'm hard-pressed to predict where we'll be five years from now, much less ten. But the reason, as you just stated, for going into the cloud-based services is to avoid buying hardware that Expensive becomes obsolete. Hardware. Yeah, because, I mean, I've always felt, and I've been doing this long enough to see the technology is always down, this new technology is just around the corner. Five years from now, there'll be something new that we got to have. So that means what we have now is obsolete, so we're going to upgrade to something else that's brand new and exciting. And, and it just seems like that's the industry. They got new stuff they've already developed that they brought, haven't brought out yet because they've got to wait for us to wear out this stuff so that we can be ready for the next level. So it, if we fall into that trap, we can never end up, we never have a, a savings. We're always going to have new and exciting stuff we have to buy, and that, that worries me because it's a never-ending cycle. It does. It, it worries me as well because as the IT department, we need to keep up with that technology, which means the learning curve for us can be pretty steep as well. Uh, this Office 365 project that we're undergoing now, I knew conceptually what that could provide it, but administrating that was all new. So I'm still learning as we go and learning new things. Yes, there will be new demands placed on technology as time goes on. I, I think that's inevitable. Uh, we're talking, you know, in the near future, drone technology. We're talking body cameras, which store huge amounts of data. All of those kinds of projects are coming down the pike. Um, we're uh, at least we can do the we can insulate us from those issues as far as the administrative pieces go, the, the office suite, Word documents, Excel documents, and things like that. Oh, I think what you were, what the mayor was saying would be a good idea, but maybe in generalities, I mean, sure. half a million dollars plus a lot of extra money on software licenses has got to deserve to have some sort of a, this is what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish and what it means for the next five years so that we're not thinking this will go on year after year. This and specifically, right. I, and I, I'm looking back, I'm seeing software licensing at 226 this year. Okay. I'm assuming that is your Office 365 subscription cost? Uh, that's the Tyler increase. The 
uh, Munis uh, Financial That's Software Munis. and okay. Entergov, which are now cloud So based. your Office 365 monthly and annual is under? Not in there as yet. That'll be, that will show up in the FY20 budget as operating. As operating? Right. Right now under operations you have $4,000. Other operating. Where do you have? Where's your main? Oh, it'll operation? it'll be in software licensing in the software licensing line item, but it won't it won't be until the FY20. Oh, year. well, okay then. Let's let's dig into that one just for a second, sure. shall we? So, under fiscal year 2019, 226,000 does not include Office 365. That's correct. Where I am assuming we've paid Office 365. Normally, it's a monthly subscriber base, 12.95 annual, per user. An annual subscription rate. So annual. We're saving money on the annual lines? The, the first year, this, this year, the end of FY18, we paid 52000 for all of our staff, but that included the support for the migration into that cloud environment. Um, as we go into the next year, I, I expect it'll be around 40 k So where is this 40 k in, in, in fiscal year 19? Where is it in your budget? It'll be in, this, in that CIP as part of the upgrade project. So you, you've taken monthly reoccurring bill and put into CIP versus into your operation budget? As I aggregated them all together and put them into CIP, correct. Yeah, I'll, I'll come right out there. I mean, this is just I, probably the analogy. It's a little interesting. It's not like paper and, and toilet paper, right? But you, it is a reoccurring fee on a per user basis with nothing tangible. I don't believe this is something you should bond, especially if it's a never ending reccurring fee. Is it, is it the bonded part of the CIP? It, uh, so it's two hundred thousand dollars in the bond. In the bonding. So we're going to be bonding for expenses this year's expenses, and that that doesn't sound like it makes sense. No. So so those are going to reoccur. So we're going to have another one next year, and another one the following year. Yeah, another it's, one the it's, following it's, year. it's a blue horizon here. It's evergreen. I mean, we're always going to have to pay for it every year. It's right. part of soft. It's a software license. Right. Which, which exact. Which is why after the, after this FY19 budget, it will be appearing in your operating budget. All I can explain is that we, that's how we were instructed to do it in, uh, as we were preparing the 18 budget. Prepare the 18 budget, put into CIP. So back in 18, you had $200,000 in bonds written, um, 52,000 of which out of that initial right. batch of bonds Correct. were to pay for your implementation consulting fees and so right. forth, plus and, your and annual the first, licenses. And the first years of licensing. Okay. And now you're doing another $200,000 bond which in that $200,000 bond for fiscal year 19 includes approximately $40,000 in annual licensing? Correct. We need to dissect what the other 160000 is, of course. Sure. Yep. Um, now that I have, I have doubt on the individual line items here, um, and I'm going to recommend, and I just kind of get from the council, I think this needs to come right out of bond and put right into operating. Mm -hmm. I don't think this should be in bond, uh, and I could be convinced otherwise. But uh, I think this, this does fit the model or the definition of operating fund. Thoughts, Council? Absolutely. Anything, that, unless it's a 10-year or a durable item, it shouldn't be bonded. In my right. Opinion. Using the definition of why we bond, I think we need to adhere to that. And even though it may show really high in the appropriate category, then that's where it needs to be. I really always believed and have functioned that way over the years is that, you know, take the item and make sure it goes in where it's supposed to go and account for it there and not move it back and forth depending on whatever result you're going to get. So as much as it hurts, I'd rather see it where it belongs. City Manager, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I do. Um, Paul, talk a little bit more about what you're going to do with that 200000 So the 200000 you're going to be able to go to phase two, right? Yes, we're, we're Conti continuing phase one, as we were just been discussing, right. and if you look at the uh, the handout that I had with the graphic on it, at the bottom of that is it's a, a list of some of the other projects that we're, we're upgrading. Um, the phone system, uh, I kind of jumped to the bottom. The phone system in this building was put in in 2004, and is uh, showing its age. We're having trouble integrating it with with new technologies. So we're looking at upgrading the system here, possibly to a cloud-based switch as well, um, although that's still up in the air. What's your budget for that, Paul? Uh, 
I haven't put that out to budget. We can do that through Microsoft as an increased license fee. But what do you have out of this 200,000? Out of the 200,000, 60. 60,000 for the phone yeah. system? Okay. Keep going. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, an intrusion detection system, what we don't have in this, on this network now is a way to pick up and stop attempts to hack. We know they're happening. We know that there are constant attacks against our firewalls to, to see if they can breach. Uh, we don't have an intrusion detection system that will alert us very quickly if that happens. And that's a combination of an appliance and software and licensing for that through Department of Homeland Security. And that would be approximately 30,000. Transition to Windows 10. Transition to Windows 10. We are doing that's a combination of licensing where we can and replacement of computers. But, but are you talking about Windows 10? We're talking hardware or software here? Both. Uh, we're replacing computers in, in inventory that are capable of handling Windows 10. We're upgrading to Windows 10. The ones that are not, we're replacing. So we're, we're looking to buy, by the end of 2020, we will have replaced 125 PCs with modern PCs that are capable of running Windows 10, either by buying computers with 10 on them or upgrading computers to 10. But your Office 365, obviously cloud-based, wouldn't your your internet access and speed be more important than the actual hardware or, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, a thin client would work for a lot of applications. It is, unfortunately, we have a few applications that keep us from being able to do a true thin client. So we're kind of in a hybrid environment now with a lot of differentiation from one department to another, uh, different, different, different users using different applications. Um, increasing the internet speed is also part of our, part of that project. Uh, you'll see there the transition to the high-speed internet and a high-speed intranet. Uh, we need to increase the, the 10 meg fiber connections between our buildings. We're in pretty good shape in this building in using the cloud, doing our resources out in the cloud. It's less efficient when we're at fire or at public works or at one of the substations where they're being throttled down by the, by the speed at which we're lighting that cable, that fiber, compared to once they get here, they can get out. So that, that's part of that, of the FY19 project as well. Um, how much are Windows 10, intranet and internet, if you could please? We're, at, we're expecting to spend about approximately 30,000 on licensing and new PCs in the FY19. Transitioning to the high speed Intranet is going to be close to 15,000. That those that will be a one-time. That's a one-time. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's upgrading upgrading our hardware uh, from, Firewalls from location so to location. Correct. Okay, gotcha. How about your internet? Uh, the inter internet is in the operating budget, and we believe it's fine. We, as long as it's on, it, as long as it's in the operating budget and not in the yes, uh, yes, and not in the CIP. Okay, thank you for it's that. On, I think it's on the last page. So that's one hundred and thirty-five thousand in CIP, not inclusive of rough math forty-two thousand in software. Right. Let's round that up to forty-five thousand. They have a tendency to creep up. That's one hundred eighty thousand. That you wanted to see. Uh, well, you asked for 200. Where's a delta? Where's a delta of 20? I got $20,000 on account of Yeah, I, you know, at the top of my head, I don't know what that is. So I can probably come down to 180, probably come down to 140 bonded with 40 in operation, roughly. Just throwing that out there, not making a decision. Yeah, yeah I, let me just add this. I, you know, I think what is being done in terms of this proposed CIP item is normal procedure uh, for municipalities. It's, it's a package deal. Think of it like purchasing a vehicle. And once you get the vehicle, then you're going to have to have insurance coverage to be able to pay for it. Um, the other aspect of this is uh, fiscal impact of the money that is not bonded is going to increase the operating budget. Um, I don't find this to be unusual, abnormal, or 
out of line in terms of what other municipalities or county governments are doing. Um, that's my perspective on it. Um, Jill, I don't know if you want to add any additional comments to that or not. I don't, I don't find it uh, either. Since it's a big, it's one big project and uh, generally most most municipalities probably don't have that capacity for in their operating budget so they combine the whole thing as a as a capital um, my my financial advisor didn't have an issue with it last year so think of it as an upgrade which it is it's a reoccurring upgrade annually we're at year two now correct me if I'm wrong at any point we're at year two Year one, absolutely, I see this would be an upgrade, like purchasing. Unless we're talking about bonding a bond almost. You're bonding a bond. It's sort of like software. If your software package was going to cost a million dollars, you'd bond that, spread that cost over 10 years. We're already getting that same concept, though, from Office 365 because it's a subscriber-based model. I, 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 I'll leave it up to the council to decide on this. My, my recommendation, my thought, is that this should be clearly outlined as a lie down and expense under software licensing, because that's what it is. Um, and I understand the impact to the operating budget and the mill rate, and it wouldn't be pleasant, it would be an addition. Um, but I do think from a transparent standpoint, it probably needs to be in the operating account. Thoughts? Council? It would be helpful to see what that looks actually looks like. Well, the whole, the whole point is it, 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 we can easily make the mill rate go down by bonding for regular expenses. So this is what we're doing. It's an ongoing expense. It costs us so much a year for this, but we're bonding it and carrying it over 20 years or 10 years on a bond. Anytime you do that, like you said, it's not showing the true cost of government. It's spreading. Now, you say that this coming year we're going to be spending the 52000 in our operating budget after this last CIP item of 200000 the following in year, we will we'll start we'll seeing no that same in 52000 in the operating. Right. Well, we I don't got what's equivalent to two years of annual operating expenses that we're going to take 10 years to pay for. And that generally doesn't make sense from anybody's perspective, but. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, with the FY18 budget uh, and the FY19, Paul has put money into the operating budget having to do with the licensing. Uh, with this FY19 bond, he's, there will be money put in for licensing in the FY20. Uh, how long is it going to take to implement the upgrade? I think we'll be complete fall of 19. Which will be the FY20? Yes. Fiscal year? Yes. But I don't anticipate a, any kind yeah. of a CIP request in FY20. Right. Any other comments on this? Any other comments for Paul on IT? And by the way, we like the internet. <laughs> yes. So all those great everything's pictures at, at least you, at least you're working in a department that everybody uses and everybody can. Most of the council uses email, actually. Most of them does. So it's good. Um, I would like to see some itemized list of the CIP sure. because I. I my quick math here, based upon what you told me, we're coming up at 180, inclusive of the software licensing fees. Um, that you quoted. So I, I think if there's, you know, 20,000 of the CIP that can be cut, so much the better. Okay. So, so thank you very much, Paul. I, I think we'll email that to you tomorrow. We're doing the right thing. I think it's a really good idea how we're doing this. I think the only disagreement might be how we fund it. And I, I really do believe it's, and maybe it's just a two-year thing. We're taking, you know, annual expenses and bonding them. Mr. Mayor. But, That's Gary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's not so much just with what Paul is doing, but it's overall what we're spending in the bond and unbent, unspent bond proceeds. We got lucky with the city manager. Councilor Gary, can we wait until our presentations are done, but can you hold that thought? Because I want to get that during our CIP part of the conversation tonight. It's just going to be just one no, second. No, but I'd I'm like not, to keep, I, I, I understand, but I just want to take just 30 seconds. 30 seconds, go. Okay. I'm concerned with, we bit a bullet we dodged a bullet rather with our with our budget the way I mean with the manager plugging our you know shortcomings I'm concerned with going forward 
with our CIP s still with the cuts being high and how it's going to affect the mill rate going forward because we, we spent more bond money in the last budget than we should have. And we need to cut more this year in order to get ourselves in a better position to move forward for the future. Yeah, and if we're doing this with his budget, there must be other budgets that we're doing the same thing with. And I mean, I'm not faulting him. I'm Can not we hold this? To, I'd like to talk about this and pick this up during yes. the CIP conversation because it's part of a larger item that right. I don't want to have Paul in the hot seat on right. this one. I, mean, I'm just I need 10 that. seconds. You've got five. Okay, <laughs> quickly. Yes, Do not contract with anyone that wants to put anything in low clouds, please. <laughs> I don't want them to get run into. We'll have to do body work. There you low go. Low clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Only Councilor Walker. Thank you, Paul. The, 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 clouds, the clouds we're dealing with are up in uh, Redmond, Washington, I think. So <laughs> I think we're safe. <laughs> Next on the agenda, uh, I'd like to bring in facilities. Who will be presenting on facilities? Ms. Eastman. I am going to uh, do facilities and then I'm going to do finance right after since I'm here, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, the facilities budget is up 1.6% or $10,000. The main reason for that increase is uh, the new software that we purchased, which is called Rapport. And it was authorized by the council last year. Um, and it is um, going to be used to help us track and monitor our utility costs so that hopefully we can reduce those and you'll see that in future budgets. Um, we're in the process of getting that implemented now. They've been gathering all the data for us and getting us hooked up. So um, that's the main change in this budget. Um, other than that, I would be this budget only uh, we have a half person that um, we share um, our maintenance person with the library. So half of his salary is in facilities and half of his salary is from the library. On what line is the, um, the software uh, for your master service list? general? Service, okay. Software is $11,800 uh, per year. Well, so, uh, uh, software example of soft QuickBooks? It's called R Rapport. Rapport. Big QuickBooks. Like big financial. Uh, for it's that, just for, it's for, facility. for, for uh, utilities only. So this is to track utilities? Mm hmm. Yep. All but one. <laughs> what was that? That would have been my guess. Yeah. Um, no comment on the previous council. No. So we are feeling their CIP expenditures, aren't we? Um, very good. Is there any comments from, uh, or questions actually, I should say, from the council on facilities? Just one request. Uh, what money relates else? to that, to uh, that report software, uh, we're going to be able to see ongoing, I mean, I guess my problem was that I thought we could save money without having somebody tell us with the software. So I guess what I'd be able to do is see what that's doing that we couldn't do on our own, you know, identify ways to save, because I was all in favor of identifying ways to save and conserve and, and what that kind of thing. But I didn't think we needed $12,000 a year to help us do that. But if it shows that it's catching stuff that we wouldn't have caught, I'd love to see that. That would be very important for me. I will um, have Derek provide you with reports. Yeah, showing what they're able to find and capture and help us coordinate that actually pays for itself, because it, Looks like it could, but I'd just like to see that evidence. Sure. That's all. Thank you. Now, Jill, when you talk about the different utilities, like electricity and heating and, and water and stuff, is there a breakdown of how much usage between the various buildings? I believe yes. It goes, it gets down to that level. So then you would know like what the, the parks garage uses? And how it's broke down. Yes. Or Hasty or or Ingersoll. Yes. 
in like the parks garage, is it under separate meters or is it all one big meter? I would have to ask. I don't know that. But I, I think it has its own meter, but I'll find out for you. Because I was wondering, because like I don't know if where the senior center itself falls under, I guess, the rec department, and I don't know if the rest of the garage falls under public works, who ends up paying for which part for the electricity because I know there's lots of times when we have different activities going on in the senior center. I know there's different light switches, so it's not like we turn a light on on one section and the other goes on, and there's usually lights going on, I mean, they're on, in the public works side. Yeah, I can find that out for you. And I just don't like paying, even though they're LEDs, paying for lights that are on for no reason, unless it's security. Thank okay. you. Sure. Jill? Um, just, I'm sorry, Councilor Hayes. Just a clarification on the software licensing. Is that annual now? Um, or I was that for, again, a startup licensing? No, I think it's, I think it's an annual. It's going to be annual. Yeah. I'm not gonna hold you to an answer right now because there might not be one. Um, or if there is, it's probably not in the forefront of your mind. But there are certain things here I'm looking at actually on our PS General and a couple other line items too. Sometimes they're small, but in the aggregate it's, it's substantial. Um, elevator contract, HVAC maintenance contract, third party service providers within facilities. Do you know, if, is there a renegotiation schedule? Is it normally when a, on an annualized basis? Are we automatically renewing our contracts? Have we put anything out to bid as of recently? Yes. Okay, that's good. That's more than I expected. <laughs> um, that's something that Derek manages, and he manages those pretty well. Um, okay, so that's we just changed over our HVAC. We had Siemens, and we now have mechanical services. Um, so he, those are things that he monitors. The budget's exactly the same. Boy, this department request, I'm sorry, just for this year. Um, is there any idea? It'd be nice, you know, if we're renegotiating to see what the delta is on some of these, or the cost savings on some of these line items, or the aggregate of all of them. Because um, right now it's in PS General. I'm not seeing PS General. <coughs> it's actually going up by, you know, 15000 17, 18, went up twelve thousand eight hundred and forty four dollars. Eleven thousand eight hundred of that was for rapport. Okay. But if they're saving money on some of these other ones, if we could just call that out at one point, maybe a follow up memo memo? Yep. Within the PS general. I guess I could do the math myself, but I don't have the line items for previous years. Okay, thank you very much for that. Is there any other questions from the council? I have a question. Um, uh, operating, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Operating capital expenditures where it says um, FY 2019, $46,000, and um, pr previous to that, it was $18,000. Uh, where do you get from that the increase of only $2,000? Shouldn't it be more than that, the increase? No, because we reduced his request to down to $20,000. He requested it forty six thousand. Okay, so using that one. Okay. Gotcha. We only approved twenty. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. 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 Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor yes. Young. I just um, was curious, the insurance premiums, was that um, on the buildings or the um, or autos? It's all of it. Everything? It's personal liability, um, it's the buildings and the automobiles and all the rolling stock. And do we have the, who's our provider? I mean, municipal. Municipal Association. Oh, no, it municipal? Isn't. it's not. It's Cross, right? Cross. Okay. It's Cross. No, it, oh. no, it's May Municipal. Oh, which, which is? On um, property casualty, it's property May Municipal. Casualty. Yeah, yeah. They have our, Cross has workers comp. Is there any other questions? No? Well, thank you very much, Ms. Eastman. We appreciate it. Just financial. Hey, do you want finance now? We're going to keep you here for the next <laughs> one. Yeah, we're going to, but um, you can take a break. I think we're going into city manager next at finance. No, he wants me to go because I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, we love that idea. Yeah, we 
could take a break. Let's go back to the original schedule. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I just, I have to leave by seven, that's why. So, Councillor Titus will be taking over the oh, workshop. No. I have to go and catch a ferry. It's my wife's birthday, oh. and if you all want me to survive my term as mayor. Nice. <laughs> 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 and I just, I'm just, just really, it's great to be across from the city manager during times like this. We don't see enough Thank of you, each other as it is. For the flexibility. All right. So, with the city manager's budget, you can see there's a decrease of $107,084, uh, or over 18 uh, percent. The lines that I would bring you to are purchase services general. Uh, there's a decrease of almost 100,000. The reason for that is because in the FY18 budget, there was budgeted the compensation study for 40,000, which, as you know, we are doing now and we'll have a report for you within probably a month or so and then the other big item uh, was the fire safety study which is ongoing that the fire chief is working on and the other item is a reduction in legal services of 25,000 when I came, the budget for legal services was 125000 And over the last year, uh, we've been able to reduce that down so that we can reduce the legal services line. The reason we're able to reduce it is with the team that we have in place, uh, with the assistant city manager, myself, and, and other folks, like the finance director, were able to handle more of those issues that were being deferred to our attorney. The next highlight that I would point out is under special events. Um, we have moved um, part of the funding that was in special events uh, that was for special detail assignments for the police department into the police department budget so that the police chief can monitor those expenses uh, more accurately than we would be able to or I would be able to do. And that's where the largest proportion of the reduction came from. I have a Happy to of answer small, any sorry. questions. Go a ahead. A couple of small questions. Um, City Manager, you said the legal services had gone, I'm looking at it to 125,000 requests. Did you say it was reduced? Yeah, it was reduced as a result of this last round of reductions because of the shortfall. That was included in the reductions that I spoke about at the last meeting Monday night uh, in order to get the budget down to 3.12 percent. So it was reduced to $125,000? Reduced from 125 to 100000 Okay. Okay. With and this latest round of reductions. Okay. Thank you. And the other thing is the sports tourism, there was a stipend of $5,000 requested and the, you have proposed to not fund that. That's correct. Um, the assistant city manager has actually been taking on those responsibilities uh, as part of her oversight duties. I would Thank expect that the next assistant city manager would do the same thing. Thank you. Any other questions from the council at this point? I have a few. Sorry, any, any councilors have a question? <laughs> Councilor Titus. Just a couple. Uh, are we still retaining legal counsel? Do we still have a retainer, a monthly retainer? We do. Does anybody? We do. And what does that amount per month? Michael Malloy is the attorney. Okay. And we do have an agreement uh, with Michael Malloy. And as I said before, we've been able to reduce the expenditures uh, for the services that Michael Malloy is providing from 100, what was 125 that we had budgeted down to 100,000. So that's primarily all of his? It is. It, the monthly retainer, um, I want to say what it is, but I, Jill, do you remember? Well, it was seventy nine fifty, but he's now, um, I, he still has that seventy nine fifty one <coughs> months were as a, um, but he bills us now hourly. Right. So instead of a monthly fee it's an hourly thing so yes. we call him for service he bills us for the service yes okay. so he still has that 
one month's retainer on at, that he keeps, but we only get a bill each month for the actual, and he reconciles it every month for us. And that has worked out pretty well. Yeah, no, it gets it down, and, and I mean also, and I hope that we'd be watching that and keep it even lower, because I thought even 90 or 100,000 is really a lot of money for a city of our size to spend unless we have to. I mean, this is when we have an issue and we need an attorney. And it just seemed to me that 90 or 100,000 was a lot. I mean, we started three years ago, I think, having that budget that high, and that's why we thought about a city solicitor. Um, and this, Michael Malloy kind of replaced that idea, but then, you know, so I'm. I think we're headed in the right direction in terms of the decrease that we're seeing, and I expect that that will continue unless something strange happens. Okay. And then the other question is on the, uh, and I'm not sure if it's on your budget there, on the, I know there's been a change, but in the PS General, we originally had Taylor bon Pond Engineering Study um, as one of the items under legal services for $3,000. I thought that was something that we did in this year. We actually contributed 3000 to a study along with two other parties. I thought oh, we already it, did that. No, that's actually something that um, What's this for? We, we put off uh, so that we could do the fire study. Uh, the fire study was became the priority. Uh, and right now, as I understand it, uh, the Auburn Water and Sewer District has contributed 3000 to this or has voted to approve 3000 You know that as a member of the board of trustees. And that 3000 would be the city's share uh, to enable us to do that engineering study. Uh, I don't know if the third party has. Um, yes, they have. It's been, okay. it's been done. So I, I would okay. assume that this three thousand here then will be you. That's what that's for. That's what that's for. Yep. Paid for that share of the, uh, right. the water study. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Councilor Gary? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is your original uh, manager's budget, right? No, not the original budget. Uh, the, the original budget uh, was 25000 more. Um, and then in looking at the, uh, what was going on with legal services and the progress that we've been making, that was one of the reductions that was made in this latest round of reduction. Okay, so, I mean, originally we, had a, we got the city's budget, and then we got the manager's budget. Now, oh. this is the manager's budget, right? This is, but with reductions included in this last round. What, so I, what we've done is now that I've made the statement to you as of last Monday on those reductions, right. we're incorporating those reductions into the budget right. so that each of you can see what the impact will be and how we're able to get to the 3.12% tax increase. Right, but the books that we've got now printed are not the they're not the ones that are with your revises in it, are they? They need to be, they need to be updated. Okay, that's what I'm We had a discussion about I'm that today, at. yes. Because that's what I'm, so the yeah. public at home, they're not gonna be seeing the reductions. So in other words, if you, without us having the updated stuff for us to follow, and then you have us bring this up at our meeting, we have nothing to reference, and I know we're moving very quick to our deadline when we've got to move right. and vote for things, and I don't, I don't want to be in that reaction mode. I want to act and responsible. So that's what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see so that we, we as a council can decide if we, we agree with what you've proposed for the reductions, or if we decide we need to come lower. Same as like, we you kindly are gonna do a CIP later after the mayor is gone, I think. Right. That uh, if we choose after we get this revised CIP that we want to lower it further, then we will have to have that opportunity as well. Right. The situation is unusual right now uh, because of this last round of reductions. We had a conversation about it today, and oh. we, we actually have sent the information to you, I think, and it yeah. was posted. And it's posted on the website as well. The, the list of all the detail of the cuts 
Our, and the account numbers that were the department and the account numbers that were um, under that department. Um, I can send you out updated detail if you'd like. Yes, thank you. Would we be getting it tomorrow so we could look at it over the weekend? Okay, then I guess we'll end up having, will we be discussing anything about the updated stuff on Tuesday then? I'll yes. I can yeah. do it when, then, uh, if we're not too late when we get done here, I'll go downstairs and do it and send it to you. Well, I appreciate that, but I don't want to overtire you either. I'm off for four days after that, so I'll be, I'll be good. Woohoo! I'll, I'll do that. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, as Councilor Gary is asking a question, we were actually looking through online at some of the other detail. Okay. I'm going to ask you to spend a little bit more money. <gasps> I know. It's going to be okay, Councilor Titus. What, what time is this? Um, and I've been actually, so, and here's a, a little all joking aside, this is pretty serious. Um, we focus on cutting budget, cut, 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 okay? You, any organization, any municipality will never cut themselves into prosperity. We know that, that's fact. You'll never cut yourself into prosperity. You will spend yourself into oblivion though, so it's a balance. We have to start thinking differently on how we grow. Um, and what I'd like to see is probably, well, I need a little bit of clarity before on special events. Up there, I'm showing 12.5. Revised online, I'm showing 25. So maybe I, I just have a little bit of a, I'm not sure which, which is the most accurate or if it's counted separately or annotated separately. So in my book, I've got 24.5. Online, I've got 24.5. That's mayor and council special events, though. Say again? That's mayor and council. Oh, that's mayor and events. council. Maybe that's the difference. It is. It Bottom is. line, yeah. I'm still obviously getting used to where money is going. Right. Um, and if it's there already, great. I've done some rough calculations, and I'd like to add $5,000 into this year's budget for business attraction, additional Chamber of Commerce membership fees, and direct advertisement to developers all three of which are designed to bring more valuation directly to Auburn. So there will be an ROI. I'll tell you right now, I think us being part of the Greater Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce, in addition to our current Chamber of Commerce, is a smart move. If we look at joining chambers that are in close proximity to us, that have high concentrations of capital and investors, those are the people we want to be talking with. Those are the people we want to be saying, hey, Auburn, we're closer than you think. Case in point, I invited an investor from Portland up here last Thursday, shocked at how close Auburn was to Portland. Shocked. And just got a nice positive email from him today. I need to introduce 20 or 30 more people to that concept we all do. And that's something I would like to do along with city staff. But in order to do that, I want to make sure we have the capital in there to do that, Peter. What, 5,000 you said? I'm roughly 5,000 is my ballpark back of the napkin math. It definitely needs to be fine-tuned. Mayor. Councilor Titus. I like the way you're thinking. I'm wondering, though, and I am going back to the money, we extra money we're spending in economic development and that whole area making it a growth area that's not only just permitting and, and whatever, but it's also developing commerce and working that plan. And we have people in that. that we, don't we have, wouldn't there be money available or maybe that would be better placed? in economic development? We already have within the Economic Community Development Office uh, roughly $20,000 for marketing efforts. Uh, I've talked some to of Mike, that money could be used to this kind that. of thing? For marketing? Because yes. I don't see it in their budget at all. It's, it is in the Economic Community Development Office budget. Um, maybe it's under. I think it's under purchase services. Where is it? General. Purchase services or special we have events. marketing support under PS General. There you go. Yes. That's twenty thousand dollars, and that could be but used was, for what I maybe we feel a, it should be used for. Or yeah. it's, sure, it's, if it's there, discretionary it's type money. Person. Right, if it's, no, it's kind of discretionary. Right. Let's use it for where we're best going to place it type thing, Isn't it, as opposed to increasing what, a budget somewhere else. Yeah, I'm I, fine I, that. I think the money's I'm there. We great. just got to. I just want to make sure that it's, it. yeah. it's utilized effectively. It's there. I we have it so. now. 
because if we have a great opportunity to do something fantastic. That's the kind of stuff I was down, hoping that department would do is more of that networking and getting involved. And I don't want to say they're not doing it. I just think there's some different and other things that we can do. Absolutely. I am not 100% there. Mr. Mayor, what about if we look at our budget too? Because we haven't discussed city council's budget because uh, we, gotta, we probably should look at how much money is allocated just for our salaries and how much is allocated per counselor for the various events and then see we could figure out which events different ones go to because I don't if there's certain monies budgeted for me to go to chamber breakfasts I usually don't go because it's the wrong time of day because I've got other committee meetings so I for one whatever's money budgeted for me for that type of ones that could probably be shifted to some of what you wanted or I mean there's just some event that the council goes to that I'm sure other counselors don't all go to I mean I'm not saying you know cut out us going to events but there's got to be a way for us to figure out to be frugal with I mean I'm tired of that saying do as I say and not do as I do so if we're going to make everybody else toe the line and cut, then we got to own up to it too. So we need to do the same thing and figure out if what we can do without as well and could go to help your ideas as well. It's, it's just about investment. Yeah, and I, I think we're all, uh, I think there's cuts across the board and agreed. Um, yeah, in order to make that happen, I, I will say that in the course of a natural course of doing any type of business development activity, one will naturally spend their own money and capital. Um, you know, that's what you know, it, it's going to happen. Um, I know I'm prepped for that and I've already been doing it. So, um, but with that said, if there's money already in there, I just if we could make sure it's called out and we could have it. A and I think there may be a, a workshop when we talked about having a workshop about economic development and ideas once we're through budget season, mm -hmm. then we make a list of priorities and what we'd like to have I, our economic development department working on, prioritize and that kind of thing. Definitely agree. Yep. I, think, I think the money's there. It's not, don't, it's not a revenue problem. It's a spending problem type thing. Or just, spend it. it could just be in a right. different line item. Yep. Um, that happens when you have $88 million mm -hmm. in budget. <laughs> um, and then the last point I have on that one as well, sports tourism. I do see that has a zero dollar next to its name. Um, and again, I'm looking at the paper version. I'm not sure if you're an updated version has zero dollars allocated for sports tourism. I think, well, the sport, I think the sports tourism comes under the you know economic community development office net 20,000 uh, could be part of that. And that could be a good discussion to have during the workshop. Very good then. Yep. Good. Thank you. That's all the questions I have on on your uh, on your budget, Mr. Crane. Anybody else? <laughs> no? That was very easy and painless. So thank you very much for your time. Do you have any questions of us, Mr. Manager? Mr. Mayor, I do not. And I know we're going to be moving into the CIP. And I'm sorry you're not going to be here for that. I'm sure you are as well. Thank you very much. At this point, we're going to take a five-minute recess. Um, and then we're going to move into finance with Ms. Eastman and then follow it up with CIP. Thank you very much.
And we are back. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is going to be finance, and uh, Finance Director Joel Eastman will give us a presentation on finance. Thank you. Um, I will say finance has a small increase of 2.8 percent. Um, Both the finance fairs. All, all but uh, 500 dollars $500, $500 of that is in salaries. Salaries makes up 93.5 percent of the finance department budget. So. Um, it is due to mainly due to the increases in the uh, with our union and non-union employees. Um, I tried to I moved things around um, within my budget, but tried to you know keep it pretty pretty level on all the other areas of the budget that I have control over. Um, when I when it was here, he was talking about the the person that we are sharing and um, her position was left in finance budget last year as full-time um, because I knew that I needed a full-time person and I didn't want to lose that that position so I have no increase there um, my original ask was to change that position to a deputy finance director but in the current situation, Peter and I have talked about that, and um, I have a plan of how to to set that up for that in the future. But right now, we'll just hire someone in to to be a, a regular accounting assistant. I'm going to be glad to answer any questions if you have them. Anybody have any questions for Jill? I have just one small. So, Miss Eastman, you Council talked design. about. We're covering this year by having just a sort of an interim instead of a deputy finance person. Is that correct? Do you plan to try and in the next fiscal year to have this become a permanent position? Um, what I'd like to do is in the hiring process is to look for someone who is interested in um, learning and advancing and then um, work that position them into that position as as we go as i as they learn that's a really good idea any more questions for jill the facility manager there uh, you have non-union can you explain that to me why it's non-union um, well, because he's uh, more of a management, he manages the maintenance person, um, and so he's never been part of the union. He's it's more on the management level, under, like, middle management. So people fall under him, like people in um, your department? Rick, Rick DeShano, the the building maintenance guy. Yeah. Falls under him. The um, audit report, the, the city audit we do, is that in your budget or in that in somebody else's? No, that's in your budget. <laughs> it's in oh. the city, it's in the mayor council budget because council. Uh, it's required by charter for the okay. council to, it, the report is really for the council. Okay. Thank you. No other questions for Jill? There being none, thank you, Jill. Oh, did thank you have you, one? Thank you, No questions. Okay, okay, very good. Thank you, Jill. Sure. All right, that leaves us with the last item on the workshop, which is the CIP. And this is uh, the revised CIP, uh, Mr. Manager. Do we have a copy of that? Or was a copy sent to us uh, via email or available to us? That would be nice if we could do that, obviously. I think everybody should. I didn't see it in the email, but okay. of the revised CIP. He's got one. This is Belinda's. I have one, so you don't need. Do you have one? I have one, yeah. Thank you. 
Brian, you need to make that so that it's on the full screen. That's better. So let me start by saying this is uh, had, this has been revised since I gave you the 30,000 foot overview uh, at the beginning of April. Um, based on additional information and also because of the uh, recent uh, assessing era and some adjustments that have been made. <coughs> I'll also say that at the next meeting that you have, the next, next budget workshop, which will be next Tuesday on May 29th, that meeting will be the continuation of the presentation on the Recreation Department budget as well as the Norway Savings Bank Arena, and then there will be further discussion on the CIP. And I have asked Dan Goyette and the Public Services Director, as you know, and the Police Chief and the Fire Chief uh, and others who have, if they have equipment that's part of the CIP to bring the equipment here. So we'll be in the courtyard so that you can actually see it. Uh, so you can see the reason why we'd like to purchase new equipment. So you can actually see it with your own eyes. And there will be an opportunity there to drill down on the CIP before you have the first reading, which will be on June 4th on the CIP. And the second reading will be on June 18th, at which time you'll vote on the adoption of the budget as well as the CIP. So in terms of the CIP that you're looking at tonight, There have been some changes to the CIP. I will point them out to you. Uh, in terms of economic community development, the strategic plan implementation has been moved to unallocated from bonding. Again, the strategic plan implementation fund is to help us to be able to implement recommendations that come out of the strategic plan strategic plan, as you know, is a strategic plan for Auburn City Government based on what we're going to be doing regarding the downtown and the riverfront as well as on economic development and tourism and space needs, technology. Bill, if I happen to overlook something, speak up, okay, in terms of changes. Um, the other items on this page are consistent at this time. I know that uh, there has been some discussion about doing the central air system for Ingersoll Turf Facility. And discuss that next Tuesday in more detail. Uh, we are looking at the possibility as part of the strategic plan of having a new turf facility. That will be one of the things that will be looked at as part of that process. The so question is, do you want to invest that 200000 We've talked about IT. Uh, Paul will be present for the meeting next Tuesday night if you want to discuss that in more detail. The bus replacement, uh, I'm recommending a new bus in the amount of 50000 that would be bonded. Yeah. As opposed to taking the bus from the school system and trying to rehabilitate that bus so that we can put that out on the road and utilize that bus. The cost for that was going to be, I think, a, a, around 20000 to do that. I think it's a wiser investment to purchase a new bus 
Uh, we have a lot of ideas and goals in terms of what we want to do with the seniors program and recreation in the city. I'm persuaded that it would make sense to have a, a new bus in order for us to be able to accomplish those things. On the Museum LA, uh, there's 50,000 in there for bond money. Uh, we had the recent presentation, as you know, from Rachel DeGrosier. I had originally thought about breaking that up over two years, even three years potentially because of this new issue that we're being faced with having to do with the shortfall as a result of the assessing error. I think it makes sense to put the 50000 in the bonding. I think Museum LA is, is doing a really good job in terms of what they're doing now and I think that if they're successful in terms of their capital campaign, I expect that they'll be doing even more, which I think is a, going to be very helpful to us in terms of what we're trying to do with tourism and our effort to bring new people in. She talked about people coming to Museum LA from 40 different countries. So I think it's really an opportunity. Norway Savings Bank Arena, there is 125,000 in the budget for a new floor uh, that would be a portable floor that could be used. I don't know how many of you have been to the Norway Savings Bank Arena to see the existing floor that we have. I think the arena right now we're looking at, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jill, I think we're looking at a projected deficit of a little more than 100,000 uh, at the end of this year on the arena. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, that's Jason's estimate. So I think we're headed in the right direction with that. Um, on the, the importance of this floor, as I understand it, uh, the RV show, which brought in about 25,000 in revenues this year, as it did last year, they are talking about going to another venue if we don't change the floor. Uh, Mr. Manager, may I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> um, are they gonna be able to talk to us specifically about what they are will be able to bring in because of this new floor and the and the yes okay because that would be very helpful for me yes the assistant city manager and i have both talked with jason packman the general manager for the arena about the importance of that information to the council and making your decision um, so that we can see what the return on investment would be for that because it's not only the return on investment in that, but also the deficit, addressing the deficit. That's right. Mr. Manager, can I ask that we go back to the following year and give us the cost that we did first to prepare the building for, for this event that we had again this year, and what was our shortfall last year from what they gave us? and then ask why we didn't have more than one event that helped pay for the expenses of doing the uh, overhaul of the building and buying the floor last year to do that event last year. Because we were promised a lot of things if they got this floor, number one, and if we did all this repairs and changing over of the building, number two, and Jason Wood, whatever the gentleman's name is that runs our Norway arena, was there then, was sitting beside the gentleman that was making the promises, shaking his head yes, and I want to know why and how much and where did we fall at the end? Those are very good questions. Uh, we'll provide that information. There, I can tell you uh, there's been more than one event that has utilized that floor. Um, the other day, uh, last weekend, when we had the public house, uh, public open house for public services, public works. Um, right after that event, I went over to the Norway Savings Bank Arena and they had a comic show that they were doing uh, where they had different uh, booths set up and they had people walking around dressed in costumes. Uh, I felt like I was on a movie set. Uh, Darth Vader walked by and, and uh, all these different comic characters. They were using that floor. Uh, so they're there's another event. I don't know how many events there have been, so Jason will be here um, next 
Tuesday evening to talk about the Norway Savings Bank Arena, and he'll be discussing all of those um, questions that you've raised. I have one little question to add to that. And um, what was the year that the arena was built? Was it four, five, or six years ago? This is the it? fifth year, I think. Fifth is year? that right? Is it possible I that, you know, I would we're like going to. Going into the fifth, we're going, going into, into the, the fifth. fifth. Wasn't it 14 that it started? In, in uh, October of 14, so okay. it was 14, yeah. 15. Okay. I, I'm requesting a, a list since then every year what our deficit was on an annual basis at the end of the year when we tallied up. Thank That's you. That's in your report, actually. It shows an ongoing, isn't it, true, Jill? In the, when you do I your mean, monthly report, it shows an ongoing a, liability. Go, I mean by the year, though. I mean like, you know, the year it was built. I'll get it One year you. after that, thank you. But if you go online um, on the website and look at the comprehensive annual financial reports, mm -hmm. it will show that as well. But I'll get it for you. Yeah, just to get from, so it gives us a bird's eye view of, of what's happening. Yeah. Because I think, you know, two of my fellow councils have mentioned, you know, looking at bringing in more more activities to the venue to kind of substantiate that. Thank you. Yeah, I would think uh, myself on that floor thing we'd want to know <coughs> because it was, uh, as, as the Council of Walker was saying, we absorbed some expenses last year because they need the upgrades. This year we should have seen a nice profit in that camping show, I would think. But we haven't seen the report yet on that, whether it brought in a net however many dollars, eh? It would be nice to see that. Yeah. Jason and will be prepared to talk about okay. that. I'll tell you from my experience in Cumberland County with the Cumberland County Civic Center, you know, I, I think the thing to look at is the operation and how the operation is doing. And, I, and from your questioning, I think that's where you're at as well um, in terms of the progress that has been made with the operation and how we're doing with the number of events, how we're doing with the deficit. Is the deficit coming down every year in terms of the operation? Yep. Uh, and then you have the debt service. Uh, with the Civic Center, we always considered the debt service to be separate from the operation. We were focused on how is the operation doing? Is it making money? Is it breaking even? Is it losing money? And we'll be able to provide that information. Bill, I think that's the, the essence of the, of the changes and, and the highlights. Uh, am I missing something, do you think? Can I ask another favor of you, if it's possible? Yes. We, we are working, it's kind of like you said, we're working with a deficit that we, we don't seem to get away from every year, year after year. And part of it is because we're paying the mortgage to someone that is in the business with us that we borrowed from. Can we have something that shows us, I guess, uh, I don't know if it's 20 year or 30 year plan that we borrowed into this with him? And if we bond this this year or next year, mm -hmm. what, the, what the difference would be and how quickly we would pay this down with what kind of savings, I'm not sure of exactly how that goes. But if we match the two together and we bond instead of paying him, right. and, and, and I, when I say him, it's Mr. Schott, and I, uh, it's not that anyone made any mistakes or anything, but I think we can do a lot better if we would be thinking about uh, where we could go with this if we bond this building and, and get, get ourselves out from that whatever was shortfall every year, 150, 200, 250. Mm -hmm. It's been very high a few times too. But I really think we can erase that immediately. I just don't, I can't tell you if the public would be ready for that, but I can tell you I would like to see that shortfall go away overnight if we can do it and sustain what we know we got facing, like the school and, and the new public service building. I, I don't want to jeopardize anything that's, that's, that we think we're moving forward with, but I think it would be nice to see that. 
and I think the public would like to see it. They've never, I'm sure there's some people smart enough to figure it all out, but they've never seen it right. how much would in it, a plan. How much would it take to trigger us to have to send it out to the boat by the public? Because isn't it under ordinance that a, a project of a certain bond has to go out to the voters? I think the figure is four million, but I uh, no, no, it's, I 10. think it's a percentage. It was like percentage. six million at one time because it's, it's a percentage of your total I'm spending. Sure exactly. We yeah. spent eight something, I believe, and we didn't have to go out to bid. Yeah, but we didn't bond it. That, that's what I mean. We didn't yeah. have to go. If yeah, we, what you're suggesting is that we. It's one individual project bond. at a certain level. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what that level is, but I can find out. It changes year it's to in year. The cha it's in the charter. We'll look into that. Um, oh, did you I, mention I, the 911? I have not. That because that was a reduction on the 911 radio replacement project. Um, I got the information from right. Paul, um, and it reduced that a hundred um, and eight thousand dollars for Auburn and a hundred and eight thousand dollars for Lewiston. I think this deserves a full discussion. However, I. Because I was one up front that was very opposed uh, to purchase it. I'd much rather, it's an enterprise fund. It's supposed to be a business enterprise. It has to support itself and pay taxes, as it does now. By leasing, at least from George Schott, uh, we are receiving tax revenues from that facility. And I guess I'd ask what that figure might be. The thing well, of it right is, now it, he gets it all back. It's a triple. It's we. If. It's a it, triple net lease. It's a hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars a year. We pay the taxes. We pay the maintenance. We pay the rent. Well, he pays the taxes, but we pay. We he gets it back. I thought back we, the tip, so he gets. Yeah. I, I think it's worth this discussing whether we, we buy it or somebody else buys it or uh, what we could partner with or, or, but it is, if we didn't have to pay rent, uh, Councillor um, Walker, uh, would we we'd be breaking even? Well, I believe that, but I'm not sure. That's why I leave it up I to them. If they can present <coughs> us something, we would have a better idea than guessing all over. And, and I think that we owe it to the taxpayers <coughs> to explore that and allow them to vote since we can't vote. And I don't know, what would we lose by put, sending it to a referendum? Well, well, I, well, I think it's certainly something that we, we can look at. And we've talked about it. Um, I think the annual debt on the arena is around 500000 a year. Is that right? On the debt service? Or is that high? No, it's a little over 500. Is it over 500? So. 533 or somewhere right around there. So we can look at this. I mean, that when I say that we're looking at finishing the year with an operating or, or deficit for the Norway Savings Bank arena of more than 100,000, I'm including the debt service in that figure. Right. I oh. have started on my report of, of Norway, I have started showing you without the rent payment what the operating and there's operating rev there's operating gain okay there's operate the revenue is higher than the operating expenses so, but then when you add in the rent then that's when it goes into into the deficit so they are paying all their operating expenses they're just <coughs> not paying their debt service right they're paying a portion of it but not all of it well, it should be. I, I think it should be a workshop item sometime once we're past debt, so, but, uh, the uh, the budget because, you know, I've thought about that too. But we need to look at everything, and we'll get to see with the end of this year where it's at. Because I see we're at eight hundred and forty-seven thousand, so some odd income right now, <coughs> and we still got to bite off a one point two million dollar expense. So I, I I can't see us getting four hundred thousand dollars in two months in revenue. So let's just see what that's going to look like. That's where we are in the last financial report, anyway. So. I think that the projected deficit, uh, and 
Denise, you can comment on this because this is one of the areas that you oversee. Uh, the projected deficit uh, includes uh, the estimated sponsorships that we expect to take in before the end of the fiscal year. Is that right? It's um, at this point the way that it's uh, going in the anticipated revenue coming in, we should be looking at a deficit around 130, 140. Um, and, and if I could just chime in, if you don't mind, on uh, the conversation that, that will have to be uh, leveled in depth, in depth later, um, $500,000 for a facility of that size is substantial. Um, in the private sector, people raise money and fundraise and cover that, you know what I'm saying? So there's not that opportunity. Um, also, in, in municipal government in general, when you have a facility of that size, a municipality mm -hmm. de generally decides whether they're going to support the construction or the lease payment of that. I'm not saying it should transfer to the general fund, but it would be the equivalent of asking um, maybe Public Works when they build a new facility to pay for their debt and their bond out of their budget. They would never make ends meet. And so when you look at a revenue generating facility, ça, uh, there's my French, but uh, without that lease payment, it's actually doing probably better than most rinks in the entire state of Maine and probably all of New England. And so the debt service slash uh, lease payment is what makes it pretty much looking like it's not doing well. And so I really would like you to focus on the fact that the arena is doing phenomenally well. It's two sheets of ice. It has what it has going. Um, Jason and company are trying to do the best they can to attract new events. Um, again, keep in mind, it's Auburn, and we have to do our best to market and pull from Bangor, from Augusta, from, from Falmouth, from Portland, um, from Biddeford. I mean, there are locations that are, are in some ways more ideal for folks. And so he's got a lot of work to do, and I, I think they're doing a pretty good job. So I just didn't want you to lose sight of that. Um, and I just thought I'd, I'd add that. Thanks. Yeah, and the only thing I want to say is that there's a history to this, and it's a political thing, too, in this city, because that's not what it was billed as. It was billed as making money. So that's how it got sold. Um, and it's not. So then I guess the city has to decide, OK, $150,000, $200,000 expense every year for this service. I've talked to people who said I love hockey, I, I support it, and I have no problem with it. So maybe we get more consensus that way, and it's just going to be an ongoing expense. But it's unfortunate, but that's what it is. And if that's what we want, then we have to accept it. But, you know, bonding would help if we decided to bond it. But when we get the school coming our way, we have a public safety building we're thinking about doing, how much bonding can we really afford even if we do have something to offset it with revenue? So that's another question. Yeah, I think it's something that could be looked at as part of the strategy. But I still think it should be a workshop yeah. item. So uh, any more questions on the CIP? I mean, the, we can go on with this right. arena forever, but we really have, should do that separately. Yeah, one quick, yes, Councilor. Okay, it says total on the, I guess it's, it says total amount to be bonded for, for FY19. Is that the exact same amount that we had, to, that you had brought up in the beginning? Or has it lowered? It's the, it's the same. What I've done is I've changed the, the numbers within that amount. Okay. And then underneath it, under other, is that new stuff or is that, uh, in other words, if this was already in the CIP line, could we see what was there previous? compared to what now you've put so we, we could see how those numbers have changed. Right, but it would be good to have this on one paper so that we could look and tell exactly, like CDBG was X number, now it is this number. We can tell at a glance if it was lower or higher now I think then, the only number that changed was uh, unallocated. Okay, and then al unallocated was this number compared to mm -hmm. that number. That would give us, help us we, to determine better. Yeah, we, we can do that. I mean, as I, as I summarized earlier, what I did is I made some changes in terms of moving things from unallocated to bonded and bonded to unallocated, so we can show you what those totals are. There are not a lot of changes that I've made from my original proposed CIP. I've reviewed the ones that I've made, but we can show you what that total looks like. 
because this is a heck of a lot of bonded debt to take on eight point I mean eight million five hundred thousand that is in keeping though with what has been the target for our CIP which has been discussed previously with with our auditor and is also something that we discussed as part of our overall financial plan for the city uh, the 8.5 million I think puts us where we need to be the problem that we had a couple of years ago is we went over that by about two million bucks if not more than that so that's the part of the issue that we're dealing with on our FY 19 budget right so if we kind of went over in the past then maybe we should cut a little bit now to try to make up for what we overspent so that we can better position ourselves because the bottom line is is only so much our taxpayers can endure I mean I know we need to develop infrastructure I know we need to do things but there's only so much money we have and so much we can do Myra I made this recommendation to Peter and I will explain to you why I did that um, number one I keep a I have a spreadsheet that lists our debt from now till we it, it's all paid off in FY 20 our debt service is going to be reduced by over a million a uh, million dollars okay so that means that we have a capacity to add in a million dollars worth of debt service Pay, payment and not not increase the taxes my feeling is at this time interest rates are starting to to rise we're not going to get money this cheap again for a long time I don't believe and so you look at the total number um, that was requested was 17 million dollars we're pay, taking a piece of that I think that financially this is is acceptable I mean I look at I look at all those things and I would never recommend this if I didn't think the capacity was already built in for us to handle this in the budget I would never ask you to bond more than what I thought to increase the debt service down the road I mean that's I always look at those things so that's why I recommended this this won't be a new discussion but I guess I'm back to again looking at those items that are truly capital items versus setting aside money for a sudden for something that right now is not identified and I, you know, I point to under economic development dangerous building demolition comprehensive plan property acquisition and I guess I need some clarification on downtown parking and walkability where we're bonding as well as using some TIF and CDBG. But I guess as I go down further, <coughs> uh, those items, uh, the two in particular, $200,000 worth, I can't justify bonding for. There are some items that uh, we're using unallocated funds, for instance, under electrical, the electrical vehicle replacement for 33,000, the Main Street underground electrical replacement, 22,000, uh, and under police, the uh, recording equipment replacement uh, for 11,500, and then the uh, Recreation, the passenger bus, thirty-five thousand. Those monies coming from unallocated, and I guess those to me are capital items that you know I could see bonding for. I think, and I guess I need ex maybe a better explanation of unallocated funds, uh, where those funds are coming from. Are they part of our reserve fund at this point? They're um, bond funds that from projects that were estimated at a certain level, and if there was money left over, then at the, when that project is complete, 
that money's transferred to an unallocated account. So it really was originally bond proceeds. Mm -hmm. um, and then I look at those every year and then I, we need to use them and we don't want them just hanging around. So I, I um, come up with what I have available and then try to take some of the smaller projects and pay for those with that, those funds. If we didn't apply them, does it go eventually to the reserve fund? Uh, no, it can't. It has to, it, because it was raised for capital, it has to stay with capital. Okay, but I guess I still, particularly the 200,000 for right now, and I asked for you know specific projects for demolition or projects under the comprehensive plan, but there are none right now. So I would think, think that unallocated funds at some point in time could be used for, for those purposes. If we had them at the time, they could, yes. Yeah. I mean, I have been, since I came back, I've been taking whatever, each year, whatever the unallocated funds are and reallocating those because that's what we need to do with them. I mean, there was quite a bit when I first came back that wasn't being done. Um, it hadn't been done for a while. And so now I, I do that every year because those dollars need, we have regulations about spending down bond dollars. And so we need to spend those I and mean, we can't just leave them out there forever. The auditor actually encourages <laughs> us to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, and I will say, I'm, you know, whether it's right or wrong, we have been bonding um, for those two items for probably the last four years, each year. So. And we have used quite a bit of that money. We have. Yes, yes, we have. I mean, certain things have come up, you know, along the way during the year, and then that fund, those funds are available to right. either purchase property or um, demo property. Why, again, could we not just change the flip it? Again, I'd rather have an identified item, capital need, that's been identified that we're bonding for. But to me, this is nebulous. What, what I would say to that is I think we have to be flexible and adaptive to situations. I mean, there are buildings out there that I drive by, and I think maybe we should be doing something as a city, and we're not. Um, you know, we have tax acquired properties and, and city properties that we are working on. We'll be coming to you with a report on that in the not too distant future that we're continually trying to work on. Uh, we have far more properties in it than I would like us to have. Um, I think that's a tool for the city. We're not always going to have, and I appreciate what you're saying, I don't think we're always going to have a specific building or buildings that we're going to be able to target in a CIP, but by having the money available, it enables us to go ahead and do a demolition if the opportunity presents itself or if it becomes part of a, a situation that, that we need to address. Yeah, one thing I would recommend, too, and uh, I appreciate what you're saying, Council Hayes. I think my opinion is that unallocated can maybe we can use that for something else but it's still going to reduce the budget in the same way it's just changing what we use the unallocated for because they still think we need to budget for the use of dangerous buildings and finding a mm -hmm. project in the project areas especially right. and then utilize it and I think right. it would help if we could get a summary of the last couple of years money that we hit bonded mm -hmm. for that and how much got used and if we find out that we bonded 200,000 per year and only used 100 of it, then uh, Councilor Hayes has got an excellent point that a lot of unallocated money. But if we show that we used 180,000 of the 200 in the last two or three years, then it makes sense to continue doing it that way and then putting the charge on economic development to use the money. Don't let it set on the table. We allocated 200,000 to, and there's enough dangerous buildings and a lot of situations we'd like to fix in Auburn that we shouldn't find, this, there should be no shortage of ways to spend the money. Or this council says, no, I don't want to spend any money on dangerous buildings, don't even have it in the budget, then we don't go look for these things. But I think that's what that's saying is that we're allocating it and then we're expecting our economic development department to find those problems that we need to fix with the money. 
That's my feeling. On it. I'll go back to the dangerous buildings. I know I've said this before, but you know, if you've made a deal with the landlord that you're going to, you know, uh, obtain that building for the price of demolishing it, that's one thing. But if you're demolishing buildings that a landlord owns, you know, we're, we're paying the cost. And if they don't pay us back for the cost, then we're losing money. So, I mean, I, I don't know what that looks like because I know I've seen a pattern of that over the years of all these buildings that we've had to demolish. And so I kind of would like to know, is it costing us more than it's worth? Because we're paying something for something that should have been taken care of by the landlord if they had maintained the building. But on the other hand, too, if, if we can get you know, compensation for that, I mean, if we make a deal and they're not paying, what do we do? Do we go after the money or you know, how does that work? You know, we lean the property. Pardon me. We put a special lien on a lien on the property. Yeah, it would be good to see that. Like I said, ask I for the like last couple that. of years, kind well, of a, of five a years. report like on five activity years. in that area would be useful before we uh, vote on the CIP. Because if anybody has a desire to X that from the CIP, they ought to have facts before they do that. Well, we can have. I can ask Michael to be here next Tuesday night. You can talk about that. It gets more complicated than we'd like it to. Oh, of course. I'm sure. <laughs> just as just a, as a follow-up to that, it doesn't change the CIP necessarily. Just where the money is. It's where the money is coming from, okay. either bond or unallocated funds. Well, it does. <coughs> it does change because if you decide you're not going to spend two hundred thousand on dangerous buildings, then that's no. But I'm just saying. Bonding for. I'm just saying changing the columns, because just adding it up, and I was just beginning to do that, but. You know, we're talking 35, 14, so 50, 62, we're up to about 100,000 in unallocated funds that we're using for some capital items, which could be earmarked for demolition and projects, but at least the money would be there for that when you identify where it's needed. And I guess. Again, I think it's just moving money around because if we, well, it does, if we do but that, I guess it's just, it comes out to the same result. I think it's quite different bonding for a capital need. And I guess that's my point. And I guess I, I <laughs> stick to it. Uh, but uh, to be fair, I think to the public, you know, to me, it would be a harder sell to the public to say we're going to set up a fund we're not sure where we're going to spend it right now, but we need to set aside $200,000. But if we definitely need a bus, we need a particular piece of equipment, we can identify that and we can certainly uh, substantiate the need. Uh, but right now, especially with the pressure we're under, uh, I think that we have to be very careful. Councillor Titus, yeah. uh, I've, discussions of previous councils, um, I think that we all would like to know that this, this is not some sort of shell game, that when we bond these things, we have intentions to spend it in a particular way. But on the other hand, we don't always spend the total amount on the project. So there's some money left over. Always, yeah. and and those monies left over will come back to the council when they're going to be spent. The administration doesn't have the ability to just go out and buy a bus or something without our okay. So there is a, some checks and balances. Now this money that we bond, we, we pay interest on it for 10 years or how long the length of bond is. 10. 10? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and after it's all not spent, does it sit into an account that bears interest or anything, or is it just? Yes. It does. Well, and we can. We have to be careful, though, because we can only earn a certain amount. In so we, we, we need to spend it eventually. <coughs> and so it's, we're stewards of this money. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's not, the, the administration is not doing any shell game on it or whatever. We just have some left over, and it's, uh, we have to spend it on some capital item. I would, uh, you know, and you're right. So there's no shell game because it's right out in the open. But, yes. You know, and, and thinking about what 
Councilor Hayes was saying, I mean, I, I almost can see what he's talking about. If we take and put items that are now un unallocated and put them into bond, right. but then use the unallocated funds to do the dangerous building thing, we're still going to spend the same amount of money. The difference is we'll bond for items that we were going to use cash for, and we're going to use cash for something that we were going to bond, which is $100,000 worth of dangerous buildings. If we have 100000 of unallocated, why don't we take those items that are on the unallocated, toss them into the bond, but then make sure we take that 100000 put it into a fund to be used for dangerous buildings. And then we can take 100000 off from the dangerous building. That was, it was 200000 that we allocated. Let's make it 100000 because now we found a, a funding source for 100000 of it already and, and long-term bond those items that are now under all, unallocated. How would that work? I, as long as we I, spend the I money. I don't see any problem with the way it is because I know that this past year and the year before, they tore down buildings that had to come down I'm sure we even spent more money in some places than we, we had to go and borrow money from other things. So I, I think he's budgeted plenty fairly going down to 100000 for each one of them, two items compared to what we've carried in the past. So. Yeah, no, I think what it is, though, it's going to be the same amount of money because you're still going to have 200000 The difference is you've got 100000 on bond and use 100000 of unallocated. So you're still going to have 200000 to use for dangerous buildings. I, I would rather be guaranteed that I have that 200000 there for that reason than to be gambling that we're going to have this money left at the end later. So Another whatever good the manager point. decides. Another good point. Any more questions, discussions on CIP? I'd like to be able to see this, this uh, revised um, sent to us via email. Um, and then if there is a copy, I, I think I asked for it before, of the original one in electronic form so we can see the original one compared to what this one is. It's clean, just the CIP without any other stuff with it. You do, when you say original, you're talking about my original. Yeah, your original ma uh, CIP. manager's um, yeah. CIP, yeah. but then the new one that we have right. today. So we can look at it, uh, compare it side mm -hmm. by side before we have to vote for the for our first CIP. And then I think everybody can make recommendations at the CIP when we vote the first time, amendments and suggestions uh, of what we feel we'd like to see in that. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's how we could do it um, when that first meeting comes around to vote. But it's coming up next week. Isn't uh, we, we're not voting on the CIP. We're well, not voting week. on it. You won't be voting on it actually until June 18th. June 4th. June well, 4th the is the reading, first reading. First reading. First reading. And second. And yeah, the second reading. Second reading is the. So June 4th meeting. is the first CIP budget. Right. Meet, uh, but the adoption will not happen until June 18th. Until the, the second reading. So we'll have time to make recommendations and send in, you know, amendments or whatever people want to do. I'll send you those, uh, those files when I send you the other stuff tonight. Very good. We appreciate your patience and your understanding with this okay. last round of reductions and adjustments that were made. And we're trying to catch up so that we can give you the information so that it's clear to everybody in terms of what changes have been made. And, and will at. there be a new budget, um, actual budget with all the changes in it? So we have a document we'll be voting on rather than on four or five different pages that comprise the budget. I've talked to the finance director about that. There's a <coughs> lot of work involved in doing that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to provide you information um, that will help you understand the adjustments that have been made during this last round. And uh, finance director and I will talk about how we can make it easier for, for you to be able to see the changes that have been made. Do you have a copy of the spreadsheet that I did for with the changes? Because it shows yes. what the original yep, I have was that. and what the new is and what the changes. I just want to make sure that when we're voting on a document, it will be posted on our website as the budget for 2019 that we're posting. It Somebody can look at that and see what we're voting for and not have to look at four or five documents to arrive at that conclusion. You'll That's have it. the summary. You won't have the, every, the 200 pages. You'll have the summary, um, which lists each department. You'll you'll get the um, you'll get the the summary that has the that's what we received an email today. What you saw today. What I see an and email then you'll today. You'll get the expense, all the all the accounts, 
the revenue, all the accounts, and then I will give you copies of the summary page of every department, which is this page. Oh, yes, good. Okay, that would not work. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, uh, right, yeah. It doesn't back. have to be all the detail necessarily, but that would yeah, work. But we you'll have, have this as summary well. page. So yep. you will get the actual budget that year. You're just not going to have these line item things. But uh, then after it's adopted, the, the whole thing will go online. But I, it takes me a good day and a half to two days to get that together. Yep. And so if there's any changes that are made, um, <laughs> it's, you know, it, it takes me a while to get that together. I can't just change out one page. So. Very good. Any more questions on the CIP tonight? Any uh, suggestions or anything we need to do? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Manager. I think that concludes tonight's uh, workshop. If anybody has anything else on the items we discussed tonight they want to bring up before we close the workshop. Next meeting is Tuesday. May 29th. And, and we're going to be doing Five Recreation 30. Department, the uh, Norway WCA Savings Arena. Bank Arena. And then we'll We'll talk about revenues, and we will also have equipment here that you can view uh, so you can see why we're asking that new equipment be purchased, like on the dump trucks, for example. Are you going to bring a dump truck in here? We're going to have one of it. Here. We're going to have one right outside. <laughs> not in here, okay. but outside. <laughs> Thank Let's you. hope it's not raining. It's called Touch a Truck. We should make it an event. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's it, then I will uh, declare this work. Oh, you had one more thing? Adjourn the workshop. Well, we have a second that we can vote on it if you'd like. All in favor? Workshop is concluded. I should do that too.